Welcome everybody and happy Sabbath. I want to welcome the first timers, the full timers, and the some timers. <laughs> it's good to be here on this beautiful day. The weather's finally starting to get a little cooler. They're talking some real cool tonight, right? We're supposed to get like up north weather. Get somebody's attention, right? It's been the longest, hottest summer I can remember. Um, I mean, I'm not that old, but I uh, definitely, where is my bullet? There it is. I don't remember a summer where every day you walk outside and your glasses fog up. You know, I mean, maybe one day in the summer, possibly two, but not every day. So, it's been, I guess, yeah, it's true, but it's just been crazy. Anyways, you know, think about what Dennis said, you know. I mean, do you imagine people coming into your house in the middle of the night and just, I don't have any sympathy for somebody that's going to come into your house in the middle of the night to do you wrong, all right? Um. I don't lock my door at night for my safety. I lock it for your safety. <laughs> so I, I think a little bit different than most people. And, um, you know, there, there, there's going to come a day of reckoning, but it's going to get really nasty before it's all done. But we have that wonderful, great promise, and God is not a liar. He's told us that this thing is going to be ugly, but it will end, and it will never raise its ugly head again. Amen. Praise the Lord in heaven. huh? Now, I don't have all the answers. And I certainly don't understand what happened up there in heaven and why it happened. But um, if you were paying any attention... It was a political war that happened in heaven. And it's landed here on this planet. And it's playing out. So, um, we got to get through it. But, we have this scripture, right, that we just read. 36 and 23, right? And I will sanctify my great name. Does God have a great name? Yes. Which was profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them. Who? Who's he talking to? His people, right? Israel. Who's Israel of today? God's people, wherever they are, right? Not necessarily just in that little postage stamp size state of Israel, but God's people, wherever they are. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, saith the Lord God, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. Think about that. How is God going to be sanctified in you before their eyes? Sounds like there needs to be some death happening to us so that Christ can be revealed. Exactly. How do we get there? The presence of God. The Holy Spirit being poured out like it was at the day of Pentecost. Amen. Right? You imagine that? The Bible talks about with 3,000 in a day. Imagine the Holy Spirit just sweeping through the land. People just confessing. Letting go of all of it and letting Jesus have the reins of their heart. Imagine what that would look like in a mass scale. I mean, 
I think some of it's happening today. I really do. But not like it needs to, to finish this work. I, um, I've titled this, this little talk, Is there, really any, is there really any middle ground? Is there any really middle ground? So let's turn to Ezekiel 36. And I want to begin in verse 16. Okay. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, and who's it, who's it coming to? Ezekiel. Ezekiel. Okay. Son of man, when the house of Israel dwelt in their own land, they defiled it by their own way and by their doings. Their way was before me as the uncleanness of a removed woman. Did you hear this? There, 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 all the way through that? Let's read that one more time. Son of man, when the house of Israel dwelt in their own land, they defiled it by their own way and by their doings. Their way was before me as the uncleanness of a removed woman. What is that noise? The headset, right? Okay. Anyways. Um, Did you just kill me? No. I just killed it. You killed me. Yeah. But the noise is still there. Yeah, that's why I said it's done. My headset, turkey. Her headset. Miss <laughs> Audrey's headset. Sometimes you lead the horse. <laughs> That's what it is, right? Okay, thank you. We're back. We're good. Okay, so this there, this possessive there, right? Isn't this the problem? Hello? Is that the problem? They went their way, their land. Whose land is it? Whose way is it? So the whole problem in that, that verse is this there, right? We got a lot of talk about there today and pronouns. You can go to the Webster Dictionary, right? There is an adjective, right? Or relating to them or themselves, especially as possessors, agents, or objects of action. His or her, his, her, its. Used with the in, indefinite third person. And it goes down and it, it can, I mean, the craziness of today. Right? This is a Webster Dictionary. Can they, their, them and themselves be used as single pronouns. They, their, them, them, themselves, English lacks a common grander third person, gender, I'm sorry, third person, singular pronoun that can be used to refer to indefinite pronouns such as everyone, anyone, someone. Writers and speakers have supplied this lack by using the plural pronouns. You know, I'm not even going to go into that. It's just crazy. All right, the world's lost its mind. The world has lost its mind. And, and you know what? Why did they put Jesus on the cross? Because he was the only normal one. Hello? A sane man in an insane society must seem insane. They thought he was the nut, but it was everybody else. You see how this thing plays out? You know, the more crazy everything gets, 
the more the righteous, the holy, the people of God look like total whack jobs. Right? We got to get rid of these people. Hello? I mean, this is where it's coming to. It's, 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 it's like a, it's a psychosis, a mass psychosis. People are actually, in my opinion, give their minds over to demons. Really. I mean, you may not think that strongly about it, but like I said, there, there really is no middle ground. So you either are or you aren't. It's kind of like being pregnant. There's no, I'm a little pregnant, right? No, you either are or you aren't. That's it. I mean, it's pretty simple. So, I'm not even going to get into all that. All right, let's move into 18. Wherefore I poured my fury upon my fury upon them for the blood that they had shed upon the land and for their idols wherewith wherewith they had polluted it. Who is God doing a work here? Do you reckon He's going to have to do another work, or He's going to have to apologize? Right? You think God needs to apologize for anything? I don't believe so. <clears throat> I guess what I'm trying to, trying to say is uh, if you got a surfboard, we're headed for some rough waves. You better know how to walk with the one that can walk on the water no matter how bad the waves are. Because that's the only way we're getting through. Can you imagine if everything inside of you is lying to you? Think about it. Think about you're flying a plane in the darkness, right? And you don't know whether your instruments are telling you the truth or not. You think that might be a little frightening? You don't know whether you can believe what you see or maybe what you feel. Which way do you go? Huh? The Bible talks about in Revelation that God's going to give each and every one of us a name. A name that nobody else knows. I don't know if you need to be called by that name to know that it's God. But I remember a little boy in the Bible, Samuel, who kept hearing God call him, but he didn't know it was God. Is God possibly calling us and we don't know that it's Him? Are we tender enough? Because the Bible talks about all these things that happened with David, right? The fire and the whirlwind and all these things. And God wasn't in the fire and God wasn't in the whirlwind. But there was a still, small voice. Do you reckon that God can talk in a still, small voice while bombs are going off, while fires. You know, I, I, I have a hard time on how to say some of this stuff. I, I think there's a very evil, evil element that is at work, okay? And before you realize that you're in trouble, the noose is around your neck. All around us are signs everywhere we look. Everywhere we look. Food, 
money, control, in every way. You know, when I was a little kid growing up in upstate New York, there was farms everywhere. That's what we had. Little family farms all over the place. And that's where we got our food. You know, people today, the farms are going away. Everything's factory. Everything's controlled, manufactured. I, I saw this thing the other day about how they, how they produce pork in China. Okay? They have these two huge buildings in this one city that are, I can't even remember how many stories it was. Probably 10 or 12 stories. Huge. Two of them right next to each other. They grow pigs in there. That's where they live their whole life. Slaughtered and everything. Boom. I mean, I know none of y'all eat pork anyway. <laughs> it's just crazy. It's crazy. Farmlands being bought up like crazy. They want to push everybody into the cities. Spirit of prophecy says, come out of the cities. The world's trying to push everybody into the cities where they can control them. I don't know if you've seen any of these 15-minute cities they have in China. People are fenced in like animals in the pork factory. And we're just all la, la, la as the noose just keeps getting tighter and tighter. I'm not telling you I got the answer what we're supposed to do other than look to Jesus. And I, I, I cannot go silently. Sorry. This guy won't. There's just no way. But we can all be fooled. We can all be tricked. And if you're not looking in the right places, listen. Brothers and sisters, I, I don't know very much, but I do know one thing, that we find what we're looking for. Amen. So if you've heard nothing I've heard and I'm going to say today at all, I want you to know that you find what you're looking for. Now, if you don't know what you're looking for, how are you going to find it? How are you going to find it? Jesus says, I am the way. You know, here in verse 17, it says their way. Their way. Right? Where does their way get you? Where does your way get you? Where does my way get you? Yep. Yep. And that's in Proverbs, right? Pro Hebrews. <laughs> You are a troubler. I swear these women are out to get us now. Don't be doing that. You'll, you'll get, make them gang up on us. You know, uh, I'm not going there. Let's get back. Um, verse 19. And I scattered them among the heathen, and they were dispersed through the countries according to their way, and according to their, to their doings, I judged them. Whew. So God, God made a judgment, didn't He? And He scattered the people. Do you think that this might happen again with God's people? You think you may end up in a facility with some other people? You may not have your books or your phone. You know what you'll have? What's in here? That's all you're going to have. And the Holy Spirit, God willing, 
And everything that you've fed your brain, God can pull out of there. Right? Can you imagine what it must have been like for John to see the end of time? Can you, can you imagine how that must have made him sick to see that vision? Think about it. But the fastest thing you've ever seen in your life was a horse. And God's showing you the end of time. I can't even imagine what he saw. How can you imagine something that you don't you have never seen? Right? I I'm not a real good learner when you just give me the words. <laughs> I just not real good with words, but I love pictures. And if you show me something, I got it. I just got to see it. So that means somebody has to do it. Somebody has to show me. You follow? That's the way I get it. But I don't listen real well. That's one of my biggest problems. Ask my wife. She'll tell you. I don't listen real well. You know what my problem is? My problem's a lot like a lot of you guys. We don't listen to be listening. We listen, we're not listening, we're just waiting our turn to speak. Right? So if you're waiting for your turn to speak, what are you doing? You're thinking about what you're going to say. And you're just waiting for this guy to stop for a second so you can get in there. Right? That's not really listening. Boy, I tell you what, I think it would clean up so much stuff in my life if I could just really learn to listen the way I ought to listen. My wife's been telling me this for 10, 15 years. But maybe I'm just now starting to hear her. It sounds horrible, doesn't it? But it's true. It sounds horrible. What do you mean? You don't listen to your wife? You don't love your Of course I love my wife. I adore my wife. If somebody hurt my wife in any way, I could probably... Yeah, break a commandment. Thank you so much. <laughs> and I wouldn't even realize that I did until it was done. But yeah, think about it. You know, this is a simple thing. This is such a simple thing. And I, I'm intelligent enough. I got like three or four more brain cells in a bowl. I ought to know, right? But think about our problems with each other and as a church can be as simple is something ridiculous is what I'm talking about. Keeping you back from complete victory in Jesus. Something so ridiculous. But you know what? You're not going to find it if you're not looking for it. What are you looking for? That's what we need to pray for. Lord, what do we need to be looking for? What do we need to be listening to? What do we need to be looking at? These are the kind of questions. How can I help my brother that I don't even like very much? Huh? Let's be honest. Come on. You know, I think honesty shouldn't be the best policy. It should be the only policy. What if we were that honest? You know what? You'd hurt people. You would. You'd hurt people's feelings. You know, if some people be honest with me, it would probably hurt me, but I could live through it. I'd rather have you tell me the truth, right? Be straight with me. Isn't God straight? Doesn't He tell the truth? Even if it isn't pretty, He's going to tell you the truth. Peter, you're going to deny me. You're going to deny me. I won't deny you. I'd, I'd die with you. I'd go to prison with you. What happened? 
It was, Peter wasn't lying. He meant every word he said. Meant every word he said. But where was his where was his dependence? It was on him. And if we depend upon ourselves, we're going to fail just like Peter. No matter how great your knowledge is, no matter how awesome your understanding is, no matter how many steps you took with Jesus, right? What if He even had you walk on the water? If your dependence is not Him, because you know what? Like I said in the beginning of this talk, there is no middle ground. God wants all or nothing. Does that make sense? I mean, that ain't, that, that's pretty strong. That's pretty strong. But does God deserve everything? Whew. So, just imagine for a moment if each and every one of us in here without reservation, gave everything to God. What do you think would happen right here in this room? I think there'd be such an outpouring of the Holy Spirit, it would blow the top off this place. I think that's the kind of things that happened in the upper room. Right? When they stopped worrying about themselves and not listening to Jesus because they wanted to do their talk. Right? Or listening to their brothers that were talking because they wanted, they had something to say. But their devotion was God. They were broken from missing Him. And they realized how they wasted so much time precious time that they had with their Lord and Savior walking with them in the flesh in this equipment. Can you imagine? God put on bones and flesh and walked as a man. And they just look, I, I'm not telling you in any way, shape, or form that I am any better. How much time have you wasted in your life? How many moments, how many hours, how many days do we throw away? Years. Years. They just, that's what it is. It just, it just rolls. But I am completely convinced if we can be in that same mindset that they were in the upper room, Pentecost, where they, they yearned for their Savior, for their Lord. They longed for Him. See, they wanted Jesus back more than they wanted breath, more than they wanted water, more than they wanted each other or anything else. <clears throat> and how do you think God answered that prayer? You know how God answered that. What did He do? They were filled with the Holy Spirit. And the Bible goes on to talk about how these great conversions happen. And it even says that the whole world was turned upside down by these guys. The whole world. Think about that. How many people we got sitting here? There's a lot more than 12. Think about it. Everybody's waiting for God. And He's waiting for us. So whose way is it all about? His way or our way? His way. You know, I got these, well, my wife does. Cats, a couple cats. And these cats are a pain in the butt. I sit there at the table trying to study this morning. And they just, like little kids, in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. Two seconds, and then they want to fight. 
I was like, grab both of them by the neck and say, look, you. I'd be in divorce court if that ever, if I ever got that picture out to the public. <clears throat> but anyways, you know, we're a lot like these darn cats, aren't we? <clears throat> we just want our own way. Want to do our own thing. 